hey guys welcome back to my channel summer is here it's hot and I hope you guys are enjoying your summer like I am because this summer is freaking awesome so far as you guys can see this video will be a question and answer video so any questions about fashion design or personal please feel free to leave them below in the comments so that I can answer them for my next video but for this video I already have the questions so stay tuned if you guys are interested. Okay guys, so I have some questions from How To Sew Easy. It's a sewing group that I'm a part of. And I asked some of the members in this sewing group for some questions. And they're actually pretty good. So let's get started guys. The first question I have here is, how do you determine what size dress form to buy? The dress form that I have is kind of beat up, as you guys can see. But it's a size 2. So the reason why I got this dress form was because one, it was on sale, and two, I got it at a really good damn price. Um, so as you guys can see, like I said, it's size two. I'm a size ten, but um, the dress form really doesn't make a difference on how you make and construct your garments. As long as you have a dress form, you can always pin your garment to make it fit, or you can also just buy a mannequin as well so the dress form doesn't matter what size you get a two a four a six eight a ten twelve i would say get a sample size which is between a two and an eight a two and an eight is fine because anyone that's average size is between a two and an eight so anything beyond that will be custom but i got a size two so if you're looking to buy a mannequin or a dress form i would say for the dress form get a size six if i was to get another mannequin i'll definitely get a size six Okay, so the next question is, how do you determine pricing? All right, so if you guys haven't seen my contract videos, please go back and go watch my contract video. So my pricing is, are, sorry. So my pricing are set prices. So for example, for prom season, my garments start at 700 and then I only charge 850, 950, and 1050. Now the prices that I have there is based on fabric, based on color, based on the client's size, and based on hand sewn applications. So if someone wants um, a mermaid style, long sleeve, beaded mesh gown with some appliques and feathers, that's gonna be 1050. Anything with feathers starts at a thousand. Um, or you can do it as anything with sequins is gonna be 850. You can do it like that. Or you can base it on um, are you shipping as well? They're coming to pick it up. But I'm telling you guys, you all need um, a starting price, regardless if it's for a baby shower, which is also part of my custom. For custom garments, it's basically birthdays, baby showers, sweet 16s. Um, graduations anything like that so my custom garments start at 300 but I only start at 350 and that prices depends on you know where you're going how fast do you want it in the fabric and etc and then my bridal uh, my bridal prices so my custom wedding gowns start at a thousand and then for bridesmaids it start at 350 and reception starts at 650 and that's also with the fabric included so some designers um, don't allow clients to buy their fabrics i don't as well i get everything because i know where to go i know what's good quality and also where i go i get discounts when i get a certain amount of yardage so um that's something for you to know but like i said before all designers out there you guys need to have a starting price please do not undercharge yourself if someone says that's too much that's fine let them go somewhere else but they're gonna get a shitty ass garment so please have a starting price, okay? All right, so the next question is, where to find flat pearls and beads? Where do I get all my beads, my stones, my E6000 glue? I live in New York City in the Bronx, so I shop only in the fashion district, and I don't buy anything online. So if you guys are ever in New York City, please go to B&Q Trimming. They have great items, like great items. Let me show you guys the bags of stones that they come in. So when you guys go to B&Q Trimming, you're going to get a bag of stones that look like this. And actually, the stones from B&Q Trimming, a bag of like a thousand of these, maybe like $40. It depends on the actual size. I believe this size here are a 6mm, so they're very small, compared to 
this size, which is a 10 or 11 mm. This is 6 mm. This is 11 or 10 mm, if you guys can tell the difference. So a, th a thousand of these, actually maybe 500 of these, will be maybe like $10. And they do have the same pricing for pearls as well. And pearls, they come in yellow, white, and light ivory and ivory. So if you haven't already, please go to uh, B&Q Trimming. Their prices are amazing. If you're in New York City, go there and take a look. And they do have a website, and it's B&Q Trimming. Okay, so the next question is how to line fabric properly. Now, this may seem like a hard question to answer, but it really isn't. For example, if you guys are working with a plaid or any kind of a print on your pants skirt or jacket you guys have to make sure that those lines meet yes i'm missing a nail sorry guys but if you guys are working with a plaid for example if this is plaid and this is plaid your lines have to meet exactly if you, your lines don't meet you're gonna have a messed up pant you don't want that line to be on top and you don't want it to be on bottom your lines have to match so when you fold your fabrics together make sure everything is aligned so that when you open up your seam it can all be the same, okay? Practice lining up your lines on your fabrics. Practice matching up your prints. If you're having a hard time matching up, just match up where you want things to match up and just use your pins, your sewing pins. Pins are your best friend. Make sure you guys use those. Okay, so our next question we have, sewing needles to use for sheer beaded and lace and etc fabric now this question is pretty broad so as you guys know i have a singer 20u zigzag and straight stitch machine so when it comes to beaded lace or anything beaded i do not sew that on my machine i just don't because no matter what needle you have no matter what machine you have once your needle goes over that uh that bead or that lace it will break your needle so the best thing for you to do is if you have any beaded lace beaded trim any beaded lace panels is yes to sew it by hand do not be afraid to sew anything by hand use your hands use what god gave you and now if you have just a plain lace and i mean your basic basic lace there's no beads there's no stones there's no anything yes most definitely you can use any needle and you can definitely use your sewing machine but of course anything that i've used in the past it's always beaded people want to be shiny people want to be sparkling so Yes, I would say if you're using beaded lace, anything beaded, use your hands, hand sew when it comes to appliques as well. If you're using uh, plain lace, then you can use your sewing machine, guys. Okay, guys, so here's a funny question, and I'm going to try to make it and read it in a way that you guys can understand. So it says, what do you do when someone claims the outfit is a hot mess and wants her money back? You agree in exchange for the outfit, but you find photos of her online. All right, guys. So I'm going to answer this question to you very truthfully. So first of all, number one, you guys need to have contracts. I've told you this before. You guys need to have contracts. The contract is not for you. It is not for your client. It's for the both of you. So you guys know this is a business. So once your client or the client's guardian signs the contract, that is it whatever's in that contract you have to agree with so in my contract it states there's no refunds and no exchanges on anything so when my clients come to pick up their garments they have to sign for their garments and they sign they sketch that lets me know that okay you're signing this which means you're happy you're taking the garment and you're you're happy you're you're ecstatic about your outfit now what this question says the client said that it's a hot mess so is it a hot mess because her friends didn't like it once her friends seen the garment or was it a hot mess when she came to pick it up and if it was a hot mess when she came to pick it up why did she take it and leave with the garment and it also states in this question that she found photos of her client wearing the outfit which means it must not have been a hot mess and that you can't get your money back because if you're claiming you want your money back and it's a hot mess then why are you wearing it this is why you guys need a contract, okay? Yes, save your butts. The contract is not just for you, it is not for just for your client, it's for the both of you. Remember that, guys. All right, so the next question we have here is how do you finish the seams on your garments? So as you guys know, 
I have an overlock machine, but it broke a long time ago and it's so sad because I do need another one. But like I said, I have a Singer 20U industrial machine and I have straight stitch and it's also zigzag. So I'm going to give you guys two options on how you can finish the inside seams of your garments. So what I do, when you do your seam and you open the seam up, you have these two raw edges. What you can do is top stitch the end seams down, which also leaves a clean finish on the outside, which is normally what I do. Or when you open up your seam, that extra fabric, you can keep it closed and you can just zigzag use a zigzag stitch and zigzag down that seam or if you have an overlock machine you can just use your overlock machine so that the threads are you know closing the seam and then you also flip it to the side and you can top stitch so those are really your options for finishing your seams and that goes with not all fabric just be careful because you can't do some of those things with organza or chiffon so yes just be mindful on what fabrics you use but those are the options you have to finish the inside of your garment. Okay, so the next question we have here is fabric stores online that have good prices and quality. So I'm telling you guys now, I do not shop online at all. I'm living in New York City and I shop in New York City and I'm the designer who goes in every single store just to see what's available. But I'm going to give you guys a list on what stores that I shop in. And these stores are great to me. The prices are amazing and the quality is really good so get a piece of pen a piece of pen get a piece of paper and get a pen and write down these stores okay guys okay so these are the stores that i shop in so you have diana's fabrics there are two diana's fabrics in the garment district there's a diana's fabrics on 39th street between 7th and 8th and there's a diana's fabrics on 38th street between 7th and 8th the one on 39th Street is a bit bigger and the owner is there. And the one on 38th Street is a bit smaller. And the guy that I actually deal with, his name is Fred. He's awesome and his team is awesome. I like going to 38th Street because it's more personal. It's more smaller. They help me. They sit with you. They even feed me from time to time. That's not the reason why I go. But I love that store. So you have Diana's Fabrics again on 38th and on 39th, both between 7th and 8th Avenue. And... I also shop at Fabrics World USA. Fabrics World USA, a lot of people order from them online because their stuff does match the picture online and does in the store. So you have Fabrics World USA. They're pretty awesome. The prices are really good. If you want bead and mesh, they're $20, $25. You have sequence, $10, $15, 20 $25, and they go up. I'm not sure about the shipping. Um, just make sure you guys look into the shipping and let me know what the shipping is for Fabrics World USA. But that store is actually pretty good. They're great with neoprene, spandex, beaded mesh, sequins, um, pearls on mesh. The prices are actually pretty good. So check them out. Right next door, you guys, there is a store called Cut, Cut Fabrics. Yes, Cut Fabrics. I go to them for mesh. Their mesh is freaking awesome. So that nude illusion bridal mesh or any other color that you see for prom and wedding season, that's where I go for the mesh. It's six, seven dollars for the mesh, and it's 54 inches, sometimes 60. So that's where I go. Um, again, you guys, you also have mood fabrics that's also on 38th and on 37th. There's two entrances, and you go in, and the elevator is in the middle. Um, as you guys know, I used to work at Mood Fabrics for almost four and a half years. If you guys are looking for free samples of swatches, I will say go to Mood and get some free samples. Um, but they're very, very pricey depending on what you want. Anything lace, beaded lace, you're looking at spending between 50 to 80 to 350 a yard on these beaded laces. They do have some cotton laces, 14, 18, 25, $40 a yard. It depends on if it's a designer brand or not. They have taffeta, they have silks, they have polyesters, they have denim, they have neoprene wool, cashmere, denim, um, snakeskin, alligator, zebra. They have everything in that store known to man. So if you guys are not from New York and you guys wanna just go somewhere just to get free samples, like I said before, Definitely go to Mood. I would say go to Mood for the experience, not really to buy anything because you can also go next door and find something for a little bit cheaper. But if you're here for the experience of going to Mood, you know, buy a Mood t-shirt, buy a yard of taffeta for a half a yard and get some trims and you'll still be happy. Um, what other stores do I shop in? 
Oh, if you guys are interested in great quality and spandex, there are two stores that are awesome for like spandex and novelty prints. There's a store called Spandex World and Spandex House. They're owned by the same company, but there are they're known for just spandex. So if you want like a banging print for your bathing suit, if you want some crazy ass sparkly tights, they have it. Like Spandex House and Spandex World are the bomb. Like they don't just sell spandex, guys. They sell spandex, neoprene, mesh, sequins. They sell everything. Um, the website is up there too. They do have websites. Again, Spandex House and Spandex World. So you guys can go there. And that's really all the stores that I shop in because, like I said, the stores that I shop in, they sell everything. Um, the quality is great. The people are great. But like I said before, if you guys are in New York City, make sure you guys shop from 35th Street all the way up to 40th between 7th and 8th. Make sure you guys go on each and every block and in every single store. Every store has something different. Every store's prices are different. Some are cheaper. Some are higher. Um, I would say definitely bring cash because if you have cash, they're willing to give you a cheaper price. So remember that and bring a suitcase or a duffel bag because you guys will need it when you guys get here for sure. Okay guys, so the next question is when you're working with a neoprene, how do you get the seams to lie flat? Again, the same method um, for neoprene. Once you close your seam and you open it up, you can top stitch the seams down or you can use your serger fold over and it could top stitch again or if you really don't want to if you have no time or if you have no serger no industrial no zigzag just cut just cut your seam very close till the seam is so that your client won't actually feel the inside of the seam next question is when did you get your first client <coughs> sorry guys okay so when did you get your first client and what was the first thing you have ever sewn oh my god so I really don't I'm lying. I do remember my first client. I believe I was in college. I think I was a junior in college and a client of mine was actually from my building and I think she was graduating. I don't even know from what, from where, but she wanted um, a two inch round neck, ankle length, open back African print dress with a giant bow on the back. And since I was in college, I actually constructed everything when I was in school and no lie I think I charged it like $60 for that dress like if I can see that dress now there's so I can remember there was so many mistakes it was completely lined but I'm just like oh my god compared to that to, compared to what I do now it's like completely different but yes my first garment was an African print dress and I charged my client $60 and that was just crazy but Lord help me. I wish I could make her another dress from 2017 and she'll die, darling. It'll be a long, darling, with a 72 inch train, darling. Yes, with some feathers, of course. Okay, so my next question is when adding stretch bias tape to a v neck, please explain. So, if you guys haven't seen my bias tape video on my channel, please go ahead and watch that. That's only for the round neck. But I'm going to give you guys a little insight on how to do your V's perfectly. So you cut out your pattern, front left side, front right side. What do you do next? You're going to take your bias tape and go around. You're going to start your, actually, you're going to start your bias tape from the V all the way around the neck. Then you're going to do the same thing to the other side, right? Then you're going to take this center seam and sew it together so that when you open it, your seam can be a clean V just like this it may sound confusing but I'm sorry guys that is gonna be that question has to be a whole nother video where I actually demonstrate and how to sew and all that stuff so I hope what I just gave you right now is very clear and if it's not please let me know like I said before that has to be a video on its own and I promise you that is coming for sure the next question I have for you is do you pre-wash the fabric what fabrics don't call for pre-washing Honestly, to answer this question, I don't wash any of my fabric when I buy them, only because I don't want them to shrink. I don't want the colors to change or fade. If it's a beaded mesh, I don't want any of my glitter from the beaded mesh to fall off. So for those of you who do pre-wash your garments or pre-wash the fabric before you sew, in the comments, please let me know what fabrics you pre-wash and let me know what happened to the fabric after. I would love to know so that if it helps you, maybe you can help me. That would definitely help me a lot. 
Okay, so the next question I have for you guys is, is any other fabric needed when adding a transparent invisible zipper to the mesh? Absolutely not. But if you do want your zipper to lay flat and not curve, use facing. So put your facing in between the zipper, fold it over, top stitch, and then once you open up the zipper, it will definitely lay flat. If not, again, here's another trick. If your zipper is flopping from the inside of your garment, push your flaps to the side and again, top stitch those flap, the, you know the flaps on your zippers? Let me show you what I'm talking about. So you see this guys, if you see these two things on the side, if these are flopping around on the inside of your garment, top stitch the sides down on the inside of your garment. That will also help you. I do that as well to all of my garments. And it also helps you with a finished look. Cause sometimes when you just have one seam on the back with a zipper, when I have when you have one stitch and one stitch, it looks more professional. So definitely try that as well. And guys, for my last question, the question is when designing a garment for a client, do you ever base the garment until fitting? So let me tell you guys what I do. So when a client comes to my house, I tell them, please wear form-fitted clothes and bring heels. The reason why is because I need to see your shape and I don't want you to have a sweater on and all the stuff that's bunchy. I need to see your body, I need to feel your body, and I need a visual. So once you come prepared, I take my measuring tape, I measure your bust, your waist, your hips, your neck to waist, your waist to knee, your arm to waist. I measure everything. With that being said, I need to know what's going on. I need to see your body once again. Um, and to get down to the question, no, I don't do muslin and no, I don't base anything. With those proper measurements that I took from your consultation, those are your measurements. I let my clients know, listen, don't gain weight and don't lose weight. If you do lose weight, that is fine. We can always take it in. We can't always take it out. So if you're going to lose weight, just let me know. Hey, Anita, I'm thinking about losing five more pounds before prom, before my wedding. And that way I can know to give you a little bit more seam allowance. That way, that way when you come for the pickup, I know to have my thread ready. And I know, okay, this dress for a fact may be an inch and a half or two inches too big. Great. That's awesome. I can just take it in while you're here. But if you want to gain five pounds, there's nothing I can really do because once again, there may be no more fabrics because in New York City, fabrics are limited. And then again, you might come to me on a Monday, your prom is on a Thursday. What are you going to do? I can't start the whole thing over. So it's best for your clients to be open and honest with you and to let them know if they're gaining weight or they want to lose weight, let the designer know. And all this stuff should be in a contract. You guys need to please go to my contract video with a notebook and a pen and take notes because you guys will definitely learn a lot from that video and again short video those are the only questions that i have so far from the how to sew easy group and again if you guys have any other questions leave them below in the comments so that i can answer them in my next q a video so i once again if you guys haven't subscribed please subscribe i'm trying to get 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 subscribers. Make sure you scroll down my channel and like those videos because you know my videos are the bomb. And thank you guys for watching. I highly appreciate it. Mwah.